What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. By goal. I pronounce you. By wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Hi, you guys. This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. You know, <laughs> we're having an awesome, a fabulous, a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous day, evening, afternoon. You know, some people may be listening to this when they're not feeling good, when they're feeling like, ah, another day of this, or they just look at something at the news that wasn't so good or something on the Facebook or one of the social media's channels, and somebody's asking for prayer. But let me tell you, the thing about it is, and I know that from my own life, and you know this as well, just stop a minute. A lot of things go on in our life, some things that we say we like and some things that we deem that is not good. I mean, this thing, divorce, a death in our family, we lost our job or they cut back at the job. I mean, things that we don't even understand. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of stuff we still don't understand. And, you know, I'm saying it jokingly, but the thing about it is I've been there in my life, and I'm like, okay, God, what's really going on? We won't understand a lot of things, but the things we got to remember is we can't stop. We can't quit. Quitting is not an option because we need you to be in your purpose we need you to be going forward into your destiny because we all are members of each other because I can't fully be in my purpose if you're not in your purpose. You know, the thing about it is always have an open mind to help somebody else, okay? That's what it is. You know I'm a minister as well, so we got to put an amen in there, right? Amen? <laughs> but the thing about it, here on Good Deeds, I have the awesome opportunity of being your host. And I love it. I love it. I'm also called a platform builder, and some people call me the be seen, be heard expert. But you know, the thing about it is, is being a servant. That's what we do here at Good Deeds. We help others shine their light to the world. And what's your light? It's your dreams, your goals, your purpose, your destiny, the reason you were created. That's what we do here, okay? And that's your message to the world. But let's get in here quick because we have a powerhouse, Ms. Sharon. We've got to get her on here. But let me just answer the question real quickly of the Ask Dr. Renee question of the week. And this one is very sentimental, actually. And uh, the, the question was they wanted to know, it was a gentleman, she wanted to know where do we get good deeds from, the good deeds um, radio show. And then now you see our branding has changed a little bit because it's the Good Deeds Media Network, because we have other people that's bringing their brand, and they actually have radio shows. They have, they're on our Sunday Soul platform or even here on the Good Deeds. And then the answer to that, he wants to know where we got the Good Deeds. I'll make it real quick. Actually, Good Deeds, if you look it up, it actually is really doing being a servant, doing something to help somebody else. That's in a nutshell. And so what we do, we want to make sure that we are doing acts of service. And that's what if people love to ask me what I, the titles I have, the different things that I've been trusted. And I, and I tell them, just introduce me as a servant. But, you know, they, <laughs> they won't let me do that in some platforms. But the key is Good Deeds is just uh, acts of service. And that's what Good Deeds Network, that's what we do. All the umbrellas that I have been trusted with, the key is being a servant to help someone shine their light to the world. That's the question. Ah. But anyway, let's not delay because I have my pen and paper ready. Because this young lady, we just found out we were in the same city. I, oh, I just love it. I said, God just blesses me in all kind of ways from the north, south, east, and west. And I bless that on you as well. But we're going to find out. I love her platform. I mean, one of the amazing things she talks about is deciding the soar. And, oh, that's just so powerful. But she has so many. She's a founder and CEO of her awesome Jameson group. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a woman of God. She's so many things that we're so glad that she can just be in our presence to help us, you know, just move forward in life. Because that's the thing we got to do is we all the, what it say, and everything we get, we need to get understanding, right? But we don't want to delay. We want to open up the panel here to get Ms. Sharon Jameson here to good deeds. How you doing? 
I am doing well, Dr. Sunday, and I'm so incredibly blessed to be here with you. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Oh, she's just so humble. But you know what they say, be humble, people. <laughs> but, but Shimon, <laughs> we don't want to delay because we actually have, oh, we just have a powerhouse pack line, they said today, the uh, engineer said. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the amazing things going on in your life. And you can take that wherever you want because I know we have our pen and paper ready to hear what you have to say from your heart. Thank you so much for that. I would say that I am a teacher at heart. I believe that I have been called to teach people not only about the love of God and the love of Christ, but also about the love of themselves. I think when we look in society, there are very few places that let people know that they are amazing, that they are worthy, that they are powerful. And we have all been so conditioned and and programmed to not think of us, ourselves, uh, in a positive way. Or we have been taught and told to limit who we are, to conform to status quo, and to conform to norms that don't really serve us nor our gifts. So I'm just a messenger to tell people to dare to so higher, to challenge the convictions, challenge the uh, traditions, to challenge anything that prevents them from being all that God has called them and anointed them to be. And I think that, that that's a challenge because sometimes we, we face so many different types of impediments. Some of them are social, some of them are spiritual, some of them are systemic. But I think when people know and understand who they are in God and who God has created them to be, they're willing to step out and be courageous and to try to walk in their divine assignments. So that's who I am. I'm just a teacher. I'm just a messenger letting them know that you are worthy, that God created you, that God gave you unique uh, skills and talents and abilities, and that we need each other because none of us becomes our best selves by ourselves. And as you said earlier in your introduction, that we all are connected, and, and I can walk in my purpose when another person is walking in their purpose. And so I agree with you. When you said that, I'm like, yes, that made my heart leap. So that's who I am. I'm a teacher. I'm a messenger, hoping and praying to empower people to be all that God has created them to be and not to live in the straight jacket of the status quo and to limit who they are. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, Lord. Now, let me ask you this because I think, you know, with society and especially all that we see on television, you know, I, I try my best and, and the wonderful Facebook Live and all the things you do in person yourself. What can we tell someone? I know this, somebody may think this elementary, but I think it's very important to say this over and over. When we say the word love, what should come in our mind? I mean, or how should we express that? Because I hear so many people saying, you know, love is a action word. So tell us with that because I think we may have forgotten or, you know, put it in our subconscious what the word love actually means. Sure. I believe that love means that we honor our own divinity and honor each other's dignity. I think that when I realize that I am a child of God and that another person is a child of God, if I love myself and love God, I have to extend that same love to my fellow woman and fellow men because the Bible even com um, commands us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, here's the challenge. A lot of people don't love themselves. A lot of people don't uh, celebrate who they are. A lot of people don't really honor their own giftedness and their own talents. And when people don't honor who they are or they don't feel like they are worthy or they don't put a value on who they are just because they have been given the gift of life, it's hard to love someone. You know, love begets love. And if you don't love yourself, it's hard to love someone else. And that's why we're seeing so much chaos and so much vitriol in the world because people don't love who they are. And, and you can't honor someone else without honoring yourself. You can't liberate someone else if you don't, uh, if you walk in bondage yourself. And I, I think that it's all about telling people and helping people see their own value. Because if you don't 
believe that you're valuable, society is not going to raise the rate. It's not going to raise your price. So you have to put a high price on yourself and understand that you are a luxury item and then treat other people as luxury items. But we don't do that. And that's the call, I think, to so many of us who do this type of work is to not only empower people but first educate people because people are usually not educated about their own um, divinity, their own dignity, their own giftedness, and we have to start there. Uh, Without the core, if people don't have a core esteem, they're going to always look for a crowd esteem. Self-esteem is important, but if you don't know to look inside and see your value, instead of searching for core esteem, you always are going to look toward the crowd to give you your self-esteem. And then you you become a slave. You become a slave of public opinion. And so I think that love starts with loving yourself, then as you love yourself, then you can extend love to others. But people don't love themselves, and you can see the chaos and the hatred that's circulating in this world. It's all because we don't love ourselves and we don't love God, and I think that is, that's a challenge. But I, I'm also optimistic because I believe that through God and through understanding and through self-love that we can really change the world. But it all starts with I. Between every win and every sin is an I, right? And so we have to start with our own selves. Oh, wow. You just, I, now I'm going to have to borrow that, Sharon. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That is powerful. It's I. But, but let's move kind of into the awesome, amazing uh, mantle that you do. I mean, you, okay, we may have had trouble and concerns when we in childhood because I think I want to make sure I uh, give the credit to his due. I think Jack Canfield said 98% of the world, not talking about individual gender, race, or anything like that, have something what we call have had a challenge in their life. And, and basically we've had issues in the past that have tried to stop us from getting our purpose, to walk out our calling. So tell us, because the amazing platform you do, how we can actually – you know, leave those things in the past, of course, and then learn from them and build to, you know, to move forward to actually walk in what God has already predestined us to do. Oh, what a great question. Um, I, I think a couple of things. I think when we are okay with owning our own stuff, our own flaws, our own mistakes, then we can cor- cor- um, correct them. I think so many times instead of correcting our mistakes, we, we, we spend so much time in cover-up. So the, here's the choice. You can confess and, and correct our living cover-up. Anytime we are covering up our mistakes, we also are covering up our power because when we cover up our mistakes, we are not being able to exist whole nor holy. So it's important, I think, that when we understand that we all have brokenness, we all have it, to own it. And to fix it, because you can't fix what you want to acknowledge. And what people don't understand is our private pain always shows up in public ways anyway. So we are not hiding. We're hiding in plain sight, really. So I I think there's a sense of humility that has to happen when we say, yes, I messed up. Yes, I missed opportunities. Yes, I made some bad mistakes. Yes, I uh, have a lot of flaws. But my past does not um, you know, contribute to my future. Well, it does. It, it gives me insight. It gives me leverage, but it does not make me abort my mission. And um, today, uh, last year, I made this a video called that you have to wash your feet. And I learned that from my elders. And it says that when you go on a new path, wash your feet. Don't take the residue from uh, from your past or your pain into new uh, into a new destination. And I think that's what happens. We don't heal. And, and, and we don't deal and we try to hide. But what a blessing it is to understand that we all have scars and that we all have fallen short and that we are, uh, we are uh, you know, inhuman. And I think when we are able to identify and to, and to own our humanness, that's when we get powerful. It's in our humility where we are strong. It's in our self-disclosure that we are, are um, elevated. 
And I think that that's the challenge that people don't want to share. But our brokenness is obvious. Um, I think that one of the blessings that really helped me break free in my life is when I put some of my burdens out there that were keeping me bound. Because remember, our secrets keep us bound. Our secrets make us sick. And so when I first start talking about my depression, my eating disorder, my divorces, it freed me. And only free people can free people. So it's so important for us to not feel that we have to hide and live uh, and hide our secrets and live in silence. Our secrets make us sick, but our secrets uh, make us uh, powerless, and we become disempowered by the secrets that we think we have to keep. I, I think that when we tell the truth, we give other people an opportunity and permission for them to stand in their truth. And then we all can do the work of healing, and we can help each other. We can give each other help, hope, and healing. But we have to tell the truth. And when until people realize that the freedom comes and the liberation comes from being honest, when people realize that, they tell the truth. It, it's, it, transparency is empowering. Um, but I think we still have to help people understand that they don't have to hide. I'm not saying tell everything because some people can't hold your stuff. Like my grandmother used to say, some people can't hold water with a cup. So I'm not saying that tell people <laughs> all your business who don't have the ability nor the spiritual maturity to to keep everything in confidence. But I am saying is that either you're going to implode or share and so many people are imploding, and they're breaking up their families, breaking up their careers, breaking up their relationships, because they are self-destructing internally. And if we destruct um, ourselves internally, we cripple ourselves, and we don't allow ourselves to grow. So I think that's really important for us to show people our scars, to show people our stars, and let people know that one does not preclude the other that we are all a combination of successes and failures and hits and, and misses. We are all our combination. And if we leverage those lessons, that's when we are powerful. That's when we are creative. That's when we are courageous. That's when we have a chance to leverage our testimonies. And our testimonies are empowering not only to us but to others. And I, I think that's really, really key, Dr. Sunday, for people just to be able to own their stuff without condemnation, and I think that's the key. Yeah, I, I truly agree with you. Uh, you know, and I'm, you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm from the South. <laughs> you know, the old saying, we used to say whatever, you know, happened in the house, stay in the house, you know, they got the little thing for Las Vegas as well. But the thing is, you know, it's past time for that, just like Sharon is enlightening us more and more uh, about the wonderful things she's saying. But we, we have to we have to share, and I'm glad you pointed out the point that we need to know who actually to, to tell things to um it's very important especially you know the you know i you know i'll be honest that's the opinion especially if you're in leadership you have to be very mindful of who you share and what i found out a lot of people that's in leadership really don't have anyone that they can really confine in so you have to be able to trust someone that you can actually talk to because what what we say <laughs> i did a sermon about a month ago that we all have issues when we do you know the lady with the issue of blood you know she kept it for a long time right years and we actually need mm-hmm. to be able to share but but sharon i, I want to ask you this because you actually do some amazing videos you know, i mean awesome you know, the books that you've written and being a life coach yourself uh, a lot of us, and I'm going to just say it, just be, be honest, a lot of us need help with that. Tell us about your platform and how you help us <laughs> on a daily basis, actually, of dealing with what we've dealt with in the past and how we can actually own our stuff, as you said, and then we can move forward in our purpose and destiny in life. Sure. What? Oh, you're asking me some great questions. Thank you for that. I, I think, like, I, what today I put out a post. That I, that I talked about identification, because I think that sometimes we read books and we read Bible stories and we don't see ourselves in them. We don't see our experiences that that of people who fell down and got back up. We don't see our ourselves in in the stories of David and Goliath. And if we cannot identify with the stories and see our personal private issues 
in what we read, we'll never be able to identify how we can see those situations and how we can progress. So I think that is the, 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 the first thing. I think the identification always precedes elevation. But I think we get it backwards. People want to be elevated without identifying their issues, and then they get into elevated places and their issues start to come out, right? Because whoever you are will, will show. Um, and so I, I think that that is the, the, the challenge. How can we get people to critically think about their lives and critically think about how they are living? Socrates said that an unexamined life is not worth living. Well, people need to analyze their lives, but th- we're not taught to do that. We're taught to follow blindly, follow the pastor, follow the media, follow the movie stars, follow, 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 follow. We're not taught to be leaders in our own lives. And being a leader in our own lives means that we have to have the courage to follow our own conscience and not the crowd. Now, and that's a challenge because following your own conscience means that you're going to have to take some risk. It means that you're going to have to be okay with being excluded. It means that you're going to be uh, have to be okay with not getting the invitations. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. Uh, I think that when we know that we can stand on our own without applause, without approval, without acknowledgement, without validation, that's when we are powerful. When we feel like we can lose everything and everybody but have our peace, that's when we are powerful. But, but however, people have to learn how to get there and how to stay there because in society we teach people to conform. We don't teach them to create. And, um, and when we teach people that they are the conductors, they are the pioneers in their own life, we start teaching that, I think we will have people who are more creative and, and willing to go against the grain and willing to go against the grain with being excluded. Um, I, I think when people are not persecuted by isolation or rejection, that's when they are the most powerful. And if we look in a society and look in our history, people who uh, were pioneers and change agents, they were persecuted, they were excluded, but they still were able to stand in the midst of that because they were strong mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. So I think I think that is what we, needs to happen, to cultivate that inner strength so people can move by the voice of their own inner compass in their own inner wisdom. And and that's that I started there with many of the, of my people because I think we we have dialed up the world and we have dialed dialed down our own internal voice or the which I think is the voice of God. And so we become uh puppets and we become parrots and we become pawns of the needs of others versus being a full fledged person and being a servant to God. And, and I think that's a, mm. that's a process. It's a transformation that needs to happen. And, and we have to teach people how to do that because life is a strategy. We need to have a life plan. We need to have a growth plan. We need to have a financial plan. But we have to be able to be a, a, a critical thinkers and understand that we don't have to go along to get along. Because conforming is just a, a, is, is, is kind of like, Suicide. <laughs> Being, <laughs> trying to conform to the needs of others means that you have to kill your, your spirit. And, I, and, and when people understand that they can live in joy and live in power, that they don't have to seek permission, I think people will be willing to make those choices when they learn how to make those choices in a way that they um, have inner peace. And I think that's a challenge there. How, how can people move and exist in their power and still have peace? And that's a strategy, and that's where I spend a lot of time with my clients on getting the inner peace. And the inner peace comes from knowing who they are and who they are not. And that is a very powerful place to be. Oh, yeah. I can tell, ladies and gentlemen, you know firsthand. I, I mean, I grew up in poverty. I had uh, low self-esteem. I, ooh, I used to, ooh, I'm, uh, I used to be uh, uh, very hard on myself uh, being type A and all that stuff, being in, you know, being an anesthesiologist, it really ran over to my personal life. But I'm so glad, and I, you know, I'll be honest and transparent here. I had to get called on the carpet, as we used to say. Uh, someone had to tell me um, 
And it was actually a mastermind I did, a mastermind, and I was around uh, like-minded people. And the ladies say, and, and I use this actually with my clients and when I do live events. Uh, I, they say, if somebody met you, you know, if you meet somebody on the street or meet somebody at a networking event, what's the three things you want them to actually know about you? I mean, it stunned me with all the things that I've done, all the accolades that I have achieved. I had to think a minute, but I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I yeah. have to use that, and I help, I help so many people, Sharon, with that because regardless of what your title is, regardless of what we've achieved in life, what you want someone to perceive or actually get from you just with your, your, your presence. And that, that just blew me. And that's someone maybe can take from that just by your presence. They don't have to say you're Dr. Renee Sunday. They don't have to say you're the founder of Jameson Group. <laughs> what do you want just your presence to, to help somebody, to shine light to somebody else? Ooh, I'm getting all excited. I don't know it don't take much for me. <laughs> you know, it's oh, so interesting. Well, um, I love that exercise. Uh-huh, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to say I love the, the um, that that you were talking about that that exercise because that's thing, that's something that's very important. Because I I too ask people, what are the three characteristics that you want people to to be you know to know you by? And mine has always been the same since I was probably like 16, 17 years old. I want people to know that I'm competent, confident, and compassionate. And those I have always are the three that I try to live by because I want people to know that I'm going to deliver them a good product, that I'm confident. And, that mean, and confidence means that you can say you're right and you can say that you're wrong and not really affect how you feel about yourself. But I want people to know that I care, that I care about who they are. I care about their growth. I care about what's important to them. And I, and I know when people feel cared for, that's when people thrive. Because I know, Dr. Sunday, you probably see it in your own, um, with your clients too, people don't feel cared about anymore. They don't feel cared for and cared about. And so people need to feel, look, I care about you. I care about your, your, your goals. I care about you being able to feel good about yourself. I care about you walking in your power. When people know that you care for them and care about them, that's when they bloom and we need more of that, and we need to find ways that people feel cared for. Because just like you, I have many clients who are, you know, MDs and JDs um, and, you know, ministers, and they don't feel cared for. And when when people understand that it's okay for me to care for you, they'll start caring for themselves. And, and, and so many people don't practice self-care because they don't know what it looks like. People have never seen people love themselves without being called selfish and, and treating themselves nice without being called selfish. So I think that we have to model what self-care looks like. We have to model what self-validation looks like. We have to model what self-esteem looks like because we use those words a lot. And, and the thinking is that people understand what that looks like. But some Kids and some women in their 30s and 40s have never seen that model. I'm over 50 now, and I just I can remember when I was in my 30s and 40s, I didn't really know what those what those attributes look like. You know, you, I heard them declared, but I didn't see them demonstrated. And so now that I start to see what it means to love myself and to honor myself and to walk with confidence and to to walk in my own power then I can share it. But I I don't think a lot of people know what that looks like because it has never been modeled. And you have to see it to be it. And I think that's that's so important with women like you. You offer that amazing opportunity for women to see that you can be bold, brilliant, and beautiful. And you you are an example of that. You exemplify that. And I think that is so important for other people to see. Oh, wow. I, I'm in tears because actually after the mastermind, because I had to get called on the carpet, that's the three scenes I came up with. So I'm just I'm just up here about in tears. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Sharon, I just love you, love you. Do us a favor. You know, time goes by so quickly here. Uh, if you have any um, last-minute things you want to say, and, and please, after that, tell us how we can support you on social media and how we can contact you for your products and for your services. Oh, thank you so much for that. I, I want to leave 
this message with people that they are enough. They are pretty enough. They are smart enough. They are intelligent enough. They are gifted enough. They are enough. I think so many times, especially women, we have been taught that we're too much of one thing or not enough or something else. And I want people to, to hear this call to know that they are enough. They are fully equipped. They are anointed to do what they have been designed to do. And I hope women and, and really everybody, but women today, celebrate who they are. You don't have to wait until you lose 10 pounds or wait till you get a degree or wait till you get married. You are wonderful just right now. And that is my, my desire for people to know that, that they are enough just right now. If they don't do another thing, they are worthy of respect and worthy of love and worthy of celebration and worthy of honor. And that is so key. So that's my last message that I would love to leave with people. And then if people want to connect with me, they can go on my website, um, SharonJamison.com. Facebook is my name. Um, everything is Sharon Jamison. I made it easy for them, but easy for myself. <laughs> So everything, I would love for people to connect with me. Um, for uh, I have a couple of workshops coming up. I would love for people to, to connect with me for the workshops. I also have coaching programs online where I um, do different types of coaching programs in a group setting, masterminds, I do that. Um, but I'm also available for a VIP day or one-on-one, whatever fits um, my schedule and fits another person's schedule. I customize everything because I want uh, coaching to fit into the lives of people. And so, and I also still work in corporate America. I'm a corporate leader at a pharmaceutical company as well as associate minister at a church. So I, I love to mix the marketplace in ministry. And I think that's really important to people to know that they, those things can work together in an in a ethical way. And so I would love for people to connect with me. They can even email me at Sharon at SharonJamison.com. I would love it. And uh, I'm ready to for all of us to soar higher to, to the highest of heights so that we can all be who God has called and who God has really designed and ordained us to be. And so I hope people will connect with me, and I can't wait to connect with you, Dr. Sunday. Well, same here, same here. Oh, I'm just so excited. I can't hardly stay still. But thank you, first of all, for being in your purpose, and then thank you so much for taking time out and being with us here on Good Deeds. If you need us for anything, please, please don't hesitate to call. But I think I'm going to contact you first. <laughs> oh, I'm grateful. Thanks so much for the opportunity. I celebrate you, sis, and thank you so much for sharing with me. I'm so grateful, and God bless you. God bless you. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, I know this one you're going to share all of it. Let's make it viral. This is some powerful information you got from Mr. Ron. Oh, my God, it's so powerful. Ooh, I can't let stay still. But, you know, we do this every, you know, actually we on every day local here in Atlanta. Uh, but live, we're here uh, out of the studio uh, on Tuesday. I'm going to say Tuesday, but it actually is Tuesday. Monday and uh, Monday and Thursday at 530 to six, and then also uh, on Tuesdays we have Sunday Soul Service. It, it's a Christian platform that's actually from seven to eight. Ooh, I'm just so excited! I can't help. But go to our website www.renesunday.com. We have a free gift over there for you if you want to identify your purpose, and then when you identify it, what you need to do. Um, if you want to host your own radio show, radio segment, a podcast, get in contact with us. We actually have that, and media coaching as well. How to be that great, just like this young lady. Woo! Be a great host or be a great interview person. You know, all those kinds of things. Uh, we actually have a retreat coming up for women only. Me and we'll have something coming up very soon. I, it's in the works. But we have that. We're going up to the mountains of Georgia. So if you in the Atlanta area or if you want to fly in, Atlanta Airport has many flights. Uh, we're doing that coming up. Please contact us or inbox us for that information. It's pretty nominal. It's not that much money, Okay. But we love you, love you, love you. But guess what? God loves you, loves you, love you, love you. You know, this is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. 
Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.